Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and it's always a delight to be back here to see so many old friends and to uh, have a chance to uh, get into this uh, remarkably interesting issue with you. I would say by way of beginning, I listened carefully to the Q&A, and I thought I would give credit to the minority. I thought that Congressman Rose Layton's list of questions raised some very interesting issues that I hope the committee has a chance to really discuss, because those questions of common but differentiated responsibilities, costs of adaptation, overall cost of the economy are exactly the ones that we all have to come to understand. And if we can help you and the minority, Mr. Chairman, uh, to organize roundtables or discussions on those, we'd be delighted to help. They have to be understood. Members of this committee have to understand them. We listened to Mr. Crowley's, I thought, very, very good statement about, you know, even at times of crisis, we can move ahead. And uh, I thought it was very eloquent. You know, we think about what happened during the Civil War, the worst crisis in our nation's history. While that was going on and the Congress was dealing with that, the Congress, Congress also did the State and Land Grant University Act, the Railroad Act, the Homestead Act. I mean, it was an extraordinarily creative time. And the fact that, you, have, you know, we can walk and chew gum, in the words of a, of a famous American, you know, at a time of crisis, we can deal with that, but also deal uh, with this issue. If I might, Mr. Chairman, just to be very simple about this and try to boil this down, I think you can make this issue as complicated as you want, or you can try to boil it down to a few simple directions. I listened to Todd Stern, who's an old and good friend of mine. If I were sitting where he is, you know, I would be trying to transmit to people the fact that we can, in the United States, commit to getting to, by 2020, a 20% 20 reduction at, in fact, benefit to our, our economy. And we can, in fact, long term, uh, commit to the 80% reduction and 50% global reduction that's going to be necessary by 2050. You know, those become part of the framework in answer to the question of the committee. Those become part of the post-Kyoto framework. You've got to have those numbers. They're not the makers or breakers, but you have to have, U.S. is going to have to commit to those numbers. If I say 20 percent and just running through this very rapidly, if you follow the legislative route and you, we get Waxman-Markey gets you 14 percent, the Kerry-Boxer uh, bill gets 17 percent, WRI estimates that uh, Kerry-Boxer uh, get 23 percent. So if you follow the legislative route, we're going to get to that 20 percent. And you can sort of see that on the horizon through the, through the ways in which the legislative process says it's going to move. If that weren't to happen, does you get hung out as we were in Kyoto by having made commitments you can't honor? No. You can go back the other route and go the administrative route. I have in my testimony uh, data which is very well documented that you can follow efficiency, renewables, and activities on deforestation. And that gets you just those three measures alone, Mr. Chairman, that gets you 15 of the 20 percent that you need. You can do all of those through actions of the EPA. You can do all of those through renewable energy standards, uh, renewable efficiency standards, and actions related to forest. You get 15 percent. If you add on top of that what we should be getting from automobiles, we're going to do that, and add on top of that a transition from uh, coal to natural gas for at least those clunker power plants that were, when you and I were young members of the Congress, we battled over the Clean Air Act under Henry Waxman's lead. The idea was to get rid of these clunker power plants, the ones that, those old ones, they've managed to evade the law and stay in, to, stay in action. Those ought to be wiped out. If you do efficiency, renewables, forestation, take credit for automobiles and get rid of clunkers with a transition to our own domestic fuel, natural gas, you get 20 percent that way as well. So this is not, you know, we can make this incredibly complicated and battle over one thing or another, or you can go back and say, yes, we can accomplish this. This is how we go about doing it, and these are the benefits from that. I try to include a number of those items in my statement, Mr. Chairman. The last point that I would make is that I think the committee also ought to pay very, very close attention to the U.S.-China relationship. It is not only extraordinarily important, but I think we're missing the boat on that. I just came back from three weeks in Asia. We heard from American business, from Chinese business, American leadership at all levels 
that we are not paying the attention that we have to pay to this most important of all relationships. They're the largest polluter. We're the largest economy. They're the most rapidly developing country. We're the biggest developed country. We are a mirror of each other in so many ways. We have agreements, but we're not following up on them. And we heard, and I've got some of that language, and I could share others with you, we heard over and over and over again the United States has got to pay greater attention, put real weight into this U.S.-China relationship. That can be done by having a high-level person representing the Secretary of State be the, you know, at a high level to be the person making the interagency process work. You'll remember Gord Chern and Bearden at that time was a good example when we were working on the Russia relay, the Soviet relay, the Russia relationship, and that really worked. We created that special capability. You all can help to get that done, and you'll know, examine this and help to get that done as you're working on the reauthorization. You know, if I were you, I think one of the most interesting, uh, don't tell you how to do your job, but I think one of the most interesting hearings you could have would be to get people to come in and talk about, you know, what this relationship is, what can be done, and how do we accelerate taking advantage of what both sides want to do. Instead of pointing fingers at each other saying you haven't reduced this or you haven't done that or whatever, that's such tired old language. Oh, my God, and it's getting us nowhere. At a time when our leadership says it wants to move, their leadership says it wants to move, how do we get the two together? Well, you have to organize administratively to get it to happen, and it's absolutely doable. So we'd be delighted, again, to help you on that, Mr. Chairman. It's an incredibly interesting and promising area. We appreciate your having this hearing, and, of course, uh, your leadership is remarkable, and you got some great members of your committee and some flat earthers and so on. You do show you a little humor in the at the top row is always helpful. Nice to see you, Lynn. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Senator and uh, Ms. Clausen.